best neighborhood, they toss the baby and stuff and the bottle and trash out in the street. So I'm just saying that, that uh, I would like to see the Christian nation learn the time, place, and season that is most productive and catching fish, men, women. The Bible says we're great, we're we're nickel to the we're nickel to the bound, right? Grace much more bound. Iniquity to the bound at night. In dark areas, depressed areas. So why not why we don't get out there and much more abound in these areas? That's a question I have in my mind, and I'll keep it until I find an answer. Jamal.
not bear fruit in me. He prunes every branch that bears fruit. Because then you can't hear it on YouTube. He takes away every branch that does not bear fruit in me. He prunes every branch that bears fruit so that it will bear more fruit. You are clean already because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it remains in the vine. So, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me, and I am in him, bears much fruit, because apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. Because apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. Your spirit is not his spirit is not dwelling in you, you're not dwelling in them. There's no way that we can be effective and productive. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a branch and dries up. And such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire and are burned up. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is honored by this, that you bear much fruit and show that you are my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. If you may obey my commandments, you will remain in my love, just, I, just as I have obeyed my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. My commandment is this, to love one another just as I have loved you. And we're going to stop there. And so, talking about, you know, being, um, when the Spirit of God dwells in us.
change our people. Sometimes we are just content enough just to come to church and to just have a ritual or just a presence. And you know, we have a wife who listened to something this morning. You know, sometimes some of us just like to hear the word. And that's as far as it goes. I don't mind coming to the house of God just to hear a good word. But that's just as far as it stands. I heard a good word. But it's not good enough just to hear a good word. You have to hear the word and then obey the word. We're talking about when the Spirit of God begins to dwell in you, it has a mission to do. It has a, 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 an assignment to accomplish. It has a work to do in you. And that is to produce fruits of righteousness. That is to produce love. That is to produce gentleness, kindness, produce long-suffering in you. Amen? And so, again, get in trying to dig in the pick this here. God is our source. We read in this text that without him and connected to him, we can't accomplish anything. It's so hard to be, it's so hard to be effective and to live your life as a daily routine in Christ if you're not obeying and complying with what the word of God says. He's not going to make you do the things that he has commanded you to do. But he's going to give you open invitation, give you reminders, give you uh, uh, a nudge to do the right thing. He's going to, 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 to be a gentleman and get you to say, listen, here, here is my word. This is what you got to walk in. But when you begin to get filled, and when that spirit begin to really fill you up, it will cause you to live right. It will cause you to, to, to forgive folks that despitefully use you. It will cause you to forgive those that have lied on you, that have slandered your name, that have did all kinds of evil, manner of evil to you, it will cause you to look at them and say, that's okay. I forgive you. Don't even worry about it. It's all right. The Holy Ghost will, will give you a compassion for people. The Holy Ghost will give you a love that, that you can look beyond a person's faults and see their need. This is what, when the Spirit begins to dwell in you, then He's taking residence in you. You're not in control of yourself. Because we talk about denying yourself. When you deny yourself, you say, God, my ways that I used to live, my thoughts that I used to think about, the ways that I used to do things and, 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 and follow certain systems of the world and how they did things, now I got to die to that, deny myself, and you got to use me, you got to allow your spirit to guide me to do what you want me to do. The Bible says, he that is born again, practice righteousness. We practice righteousness. The spirit enables you to practice righteousness. Love. Gentleness. These are the things when you say that you are a saint of the Most High God. These are the things that are proven in your life. These are the things that when somebody says that I'm a Christian, I'm saved, I know Jesus. Me and him, we like this. We type like that. So then, then, then if you are, have that relationship with him, you should be walking how your father walks. You should be demonstrating the kindness and the love and the consideration that he had for humanity when he walked the earth. You should have a, 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 a 
contemporary society that we like to live in. And we think things are supposed to go so fast. You know, I don't, I don't know that one person that if you study something or you want to become something and, or you start training for a new job or whatever the situation may be, you want to have it tonight. You just started on a job <laughs> and you want to know what you're doing on the first line. That just doesn't happen. It, it is time. It takes time to, 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 to progress in, in your walk with Christ. And we're going to talk about that a little later, but I want to get back to something that Sister Tina said, Minister Tina said, because see, sometimes we got to, you know, that's why he keeps saying, if my, if my spirit abides in you. See, you know, we, we, we look over this IF word. It says, if my spirit abides in you. But like I said before, the spirit of God has a work to do. I can remember and I can tell you from my own experience that when he gets into you and you have received him because you believe in him. Okay, let's get that on the forefront. Because you believe in Christ, the spirit of God, what he done for you. On the cross, when you believe in him, you will receive the Holy Spirit, which is the gift that he has promised every believer and everyone that says yes to him. Okay, so when you believe him and you begin to receive his spirit that's inside of you, then he has a mission to work on you, and then he starts killing your will. He starts gathering and piercing those, those, those habits and those things that your selfishness, your unrighteousness, he starts to bring those things down in your life. And so sometimes my, my question is, did we really let him come in? Because just because we said, yeah, I'm going to be saved, that don't mean we automatically let him in. Sometimes, just like sometimes people get married, I don't You don't necessarily get married because you love somebody. You get married because they got money. You get married because of whatever your prior um, circumstances was and maybe this person was going to fit what you needed at the time. You get married because somebody's uh, uh, rich or you need security. You get married for most of the time when you see divorces it's because they get married because they don't love each other for real. The Bible says uh, 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 what God has drawn together let no man is them. It doesn't mean that you got married because you loved each other. It doesn't mean that because you said, God, I, I, you know, I want to be saved. That doesn't mean that that was your purpose. It could have been just, well, at the time, it's really rough. So, I think maybe, you know, I'll see what I can go over here and get for God. And it doesn't mean that it was genuine. It doesn't mean that because you say you're my friend, that that's genuine. We got to get through the test. We got to see when life starts to buckle down on us. And if I say I'm your friend, then I'm going to stick close to you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to answer your phone calls. I'm going to I'm going to show love and action to help you. And so and, and, and I see you there. And so when you get in a relationship with Christ, I believe that when you say you I, I do to Christ, then it's not how much of what you, you know, it's what you, oh, how much you can obey what God told you to do, which determines your salvation in Him. Because if you say, God, I love you, I love you, I love you, what did you say? If you love me, you do what? You're going to keep my commandments. But I can say, God, I love you all day long. But I never practice what you told me to do. So what kind of relationship do we have? He says, with your mouth, you draw close to me, you bless me. God, you're good. God, you're worthy. I love you. You're the awesome. You're the morning star. You're my buckler, my shield, my protection, my this, that, that, that I am. But your actions are so far from what your mouth is saying. And I know this ain't the stuff that make you jump up and down and want to do a hip hop and all that. And that's no, it's not. I don't like to talk about stuff that gets you excited and get you all pumped up and then you go out there and psh, it's the same thing over again. We must, as Christians, get things that that solid is meat for those that are mature and milk to those that are our babies. Everybody must get the real word, the unadulterated word, so that it helps them grow. Oh, yeah. Wherever your level is, it must help you grow. Amen. Amen. Okay. And so, so now. And so, yes, then. Um, well, I think we're talking about when we 
that spirit, that, that spirit cooperates with God. Ah, yes, that's what I was trying to get to. See, the spirit, you know, Christ said, my sheep know my voice, and they do hear me and obey me. And the stranger's voice, they don't listen to. And so, when you are a part of God's family and you are his sheep, when he speaks, he says you obey his voice. You can. And so see, sometimes that's why it's so good to know who you are. Know where you stand instead of working on everybody else. It's so quick to look at everybody else. Everybody else is with what they doing, what they not doing. You don't even know you. You got, if you understand how much it takes to know who you are, you would try to be worried about Joe Blow and, and Mary Sue and all of them. It takes a lot just to know who you are. Because it can be evident that you really don't know who you are in Christ. And so you have to spend time knowing because if you are in fact or indeed his sheep, you will work with him because he has called you. He has called you, and, with, and being that he has called you, 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 you comply. Even if sometimes he, he'll come up on you, like Pop said, and I understand it. Sometimes through a song you listen to, he'll come up on you and press his love on you, convict you. He'll start convicting you, and you'll start seeing where you need to obey and comply and to give in and to yield yourself to him. You'll start doing that. And see, so I have a hard time understanding when a group folks says, no, no, I can't, no, no, no. But I, I got, then that goes back to where is your heart? Where in the Bible, uh, David says, renewing me, give me a clean heart. And renewing me the right spirit. You can't do too much if you ain't got a clean heart and you ain't got the right spirit within you. You can't go very far in Christ. They pray at all the time. That the words of my heart, the words of my heart, my actions, my, my character, the meditation of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I've got to have this. Well, because then me and you, again, it's not abiding, and I'm remaining in you. If I'm not, if I'm not bearing fruit, then God has said, excuse me, get your stuff together. Go on back and get right. Get your stuff right. Because you can't, you shouldn't be in the, in the will of God not bearing fruit. You shouldn't be. You should be, if you're in, if you're in his, if you're a branch, and you're connected to the vine, which is God is the source that's got all the root that you need, then on your branch is going to flow fruits of righteousness. You should not be a branch and you're an apple or a banana and then you're not growing bananas or peaches or whatever. There's something wrong. Are you really connected? Just may be that you're not. Because there's no way a branch can be connected to that source and, and not get it, and get all the nourishment and, the, and all the things that it needs and to produce the fruit, and, and there's no fruit on that branch. Because that is the way, that is the mission of a saint, of a born again saint, is to produce fruit. That when people, when you walk, when you walk around, people should see your life. You should be dropping off golden, delicious apples. You should be dropping off. Uh, bright banana, bananas, and you should be dropping off pears that are just uh, scrumptious good. People should see that love, that joy, that peace, that kindness, that goodness, that gentleness, that long suffering, that patience, that peace. They should be seeing that in your life. When the Spirit of God dwells in us, there are those productive and effective fruits that are falling off of our life. And you don't even know about people are taking it from you. It's gravity. I see that peace in him. I see that love in him. I see that content in him. I see that temperance in him. I see that long suffering in him. They're grabbing that from you. So I'm a challenge people. I'm a challenge us to know ourselves. Yes, ma'am.
see him first come around. He's not walking. Ain't you saying in your head what's going on? Amen. Why is this baby not walking? Yeah, why is he not talking? He's 18 months. What's going on? And so, and in a like manner, as Christians, we are in the same way because we're saying, well, how long have you been saved?
seven, eight, nine, ten years. There should be some spiritual maturity yeah. inside of oneself. There should be some growth. There should be some things that you, you used to do that you don't do no more. Amen. There should be some patterns of righteousness in your life. The Bible tells us to put off the old man, put off those things that, that, that you know, where we walk according to our lust of this form of world. Well, I can deal with you, Brother John, but I can't stand here. I am 
there are fruits that begin, begin to be produced in us. And fruit is brought into maturity because of the Spirit of God that dwells in us. The Spirit of God will endow you to live right, to talk right, to walk right, to be all that He said that you can be through His power. Amen? Nothing is impossible to those that believe in Him. All things are possible with Christ. All things are possible with Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, I'll bring what I have to say to a close. I'm so thankful to be able to grace you with the love of Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stay